everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and today I'm making a masculine type soap, and you know, some people say, well, what does that really mean? But in this case, it really means I'm starting with a fragrance oil that's kind of like um, a male cologne type thing, and it's not strong, it's very kind of soft, so it could actually be unisex, I believe. But um, I take the lead from the fragrance almost always when I'm making the design. And for the male soaps, I generally t tend to use cool colors, the blues, the greens, and those colors there with an addition of maybe black and the addition also of an earth color. In this case, I'm using kind of a mm, ochre red, um, maybe that you would see in a reddish type of soil. And then the design part, I'm making a, a kind of loose interpretation of a tiger swirl. And I poured soap on the sides as I did that, so the stripes are kind of in the center of the soap. So let's show you, instead of telling you all about this soap called Grizzly. And I want to thank people for their good wishes about uh, my mom lately too, so I appreciate that. And it made it hard for, hard for me to um, make so many comments on them. They came in from Instagram and YouTube. So let's get started with the making of this soap. Okay, and we're going to soap at about 75 degrees today. You see those little bits in there? That is the kaolin clay. Gives the soap a nice slip. I'm going to blend that well first. Also, I'm using goat milk today. I usually like to blend that up really nice. And then I'm going to add the white solution. Just blending to emulsification, which happens pretty quickly. If I stir the lime oils together first. So let me get the fragrance in there. I should not. Total Hot Man from Nature's Garden. It smells great. Nice masculine soft scent though. So let's pour this to the colors. Got some nice, really earthy colors that I'm using today. That's uh, copper with some gold. It's my most concentrated. So I get a little sparkle there. My green. Black. Nice royal blue. And the rest is going to be this nice. This is called the Enchanted Forest. I knew it was called something. Let's use a green spatula. It smells great in here. Blended well. Let's go for the gold and copper. Finally, the blue. Okay, and the black I'm going to blend with my favorite new tool. Alright, so let's stir these. It's a pretty reliable fragrance, total hot man. 
holds its scent well and it doesn't accelerate doesn't discolor take my time actually it's still really nice okay green And I find that when I'm making the soaps that are really intended for the guys out there that I don't want the contrast in the colors to be as um, stark. I want them to be closer in value range. It's great blue. This is Klein Blue. Nurture Soap. By the way, I don't mean these as advertisements at all. This is just because people are generally curious about the exact colors that I use. So I don't receive anything for promoting them at all. I just want you all to know what I'm using. Because people generally ask and it's easier for me to just get it out there than to respond hundred times what things are. Okay, so we're ready to pour and get this base color in there first. About half of it. Okay, so let's do this tiger swirl. It's kind of a blind tiger swirl because I can't really see what it's doing. probably speed up to this so that you don't have to just watch this go in there like that and once it's all poured I'll come back to you this will be a good time to stir it out a little bit and that loosens it up again And here is where I'm going to just pour some of this on the sides. look really nice together. So I use the smallest amount of black so I've run out of that for this part of the pour and then keep some for the top and the reason for doing that is so that it breaks the pattern a little bit which i think is always an interesting phenomenon of design something that catches the attention again i'm going to get this on the sides stir it a little bit Here. 
And since so you really do need a fragrance that behaves itself, so you can continue to pour. This is one of the messiest pours for me. Okay, so I'll get the rest of this in there. Get the top figured out. Turn this mold because the angle is just get some of this black in there. shut off so I don't know where it shut off but I was just saying we'll bring you back for the cut okay so I'm really curious on what happened inside there it's the one thing that's really fascinating about soap making and designing the soap is you're doing it all on the inside where you can't really see what's really going on so there's my tiger swirl or tiger pour I like the colors and I really want something a little different every time I do a technique so I really wanted the swirls to be on the inside of the bars and that's why I kept pouring the green along the edges as the center built up So I want, also wanted colors that befitted a, a masculine scent soap. So it's sort of got that tiger stripe vibe going on. And the colors are a little more muted. I still wanted a lot of color because that's my brand. And the other thing is to not have quite as much contrast. So if you like, think of camo. It's all um, fairly similar values. Meaning that there's not a lot of uh, extreme darks and lights. I like that. And... Uh, as an artist, I really do like not having such a strict plan to a design that it's easy to figure out and lose interest. So that's why if you see my pores, like this tiger pore, I don't often even worry about the same order 
of the pouring of the colors all the way through. And for example, I poured and made just enough black so I could use it as an accent. And the word accent is exactly what it sounds like. It's meant to be a specific um, location that's not all over the place. It's just for an interest. And uh, I like that. I like how the center swirl of this matches the central swirl of the top and like just kind of carries through. So what really I'm doing is passing on decades of learning about art and elements of art that I learned in art school but that I continue to practice in my paintings and soap making that have been really useful and helpful. Of course, you can always do your own thing, too. So I don't ever want to say you have to do it this way. They're just little tips. And I'm famous for breaking rules, too. We actually had an art project in school where we had to find an established art rule, things that you really shouldn't do. To break that rule and still make the painting work was one of the best projects that I ever did. And I still remember that painting that I did. It was uh, ducks in a pond, and I made some abstract duck ducks, and I made the ducks red, and I made, oh, excuse me, no, I made the background red, and I made the ducks blue. And usually you, you reverse that because warm colors generally are meant to uh, be in the foreground. Like it's, and cool colors like the sky are generally meant to recede or be in the background. So changing that around and still making it work was a good project. So I'll leave off on this one and I really like this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for visiting the Vibrant Soap store online at vibrantsoap.com. And I just reached another milestone on Instagram with uh, 21,000 people there. Some of you are there too and make comments all the time. We have a nice little chat, chat back and forth. And that's where I post two photos every day of things that inspire me or photos of soaps in progress, things like that. So thanks if you're responding like that and I really appreciate your subscriptions if you enjoy the channel. And we'll see you next time. Bye everybody. So there's some kind of design information in this too. Generally, uh, the male colors for uh, male colors. <laughs>